two guys behind D. Got one of them pinned down. Yeah, still behind here, coming this way. Oh. Got one. Got one. Here. Hey guys, they're everywhere! <laughs> and it's my LRD versus the soldier. I'm gonna knife. I knifed him. <laughs> I knifed. They're taking B. I'm gonna have to go rips. Last one. Yeah, that'll be good. How about I knife the uh, engineer trying to lock you first? Hey. I know. <laughs> That's the same guy again. <laughs> hey folks, Dave the Not So Evil, Evil Viking 13 here, talking to you guys about Battlefield 4 again for the first time in a while. The Dragon's Teeth DLC recently came out for premium members, and as someone who jumped on the premium train way too early last year, I basically already paid for this, I might as well try it out. I actually had not played a lot of Battlefield 4 since that netcode patch in early June. I spent some time in Battlefield Hardline and then just kind of took a break from most things Battlefield for a while. I've played a bit of CTE here and there, but I figure that Dragon's Teeth is a decent reason to come back and see how things are on the main uh, stable branch of the game, if you will. Let's keep it simple. What does the DLC bring? Well, four new maps, Lumfini Garden, Pearl Market, Propaganda, and Sunken Dragon. A collection, a handful really, of new weapons, a couple of new gadgets like the Riot Shield, and the, uh, the little drone thing whose name I can never remember. You know, one that has the cannon attached to it. Some new achievements and the like, basically standard fare for a Battlefield DLC as we've seen since Battlefield 3. It may just be me, but it seems like this DLC's release was both delayed quite a bit and at the end even rushed out the door. It just no one knew when it was coming, what it was really going to be like. The teaser and the trailer were launched uh, pretty close to the release week. But anyway, it's here and it's pretty good. Honestly, I'm not blown away by it. I've had some fun in it. My first impressions weren't any kind of, wow, this is incredible, this is the DLC that everybody needs to get. But uh, a couple of the maps caught my eye, and the game as a whole in its core actually feels much, much better than it used to. Going into Dragon's Teeth, I almost didn't even notice the DLC and what it was offering because I was like, hey, the game feels a lot closer to CTE now. That's the Battlefield Community Test Environment, if you're not familiar with that. It's kind of the Battlefield 4 experimental branch where developers can push out patches more often. And in my experience, it's the superior version of Battlefield 4, with better netcode, some more up-to-date changes, and things like that. Really though, the quality of the game was almost distracting at first. I still got some weird occasional desync issues where me and a teammate could not kill this one guy and he couldn't kill us until all of a sudden we all just died and I've gotten killed behind corners a few times but compared to how the game was uh, three or four months ago and I mentioned a lot of this in my original June video about the main netcode patch the game just feels a lot tighter and a lot better it's a lot easier to have fun in you don't find yourself getting angry at the game for things outside of your control so often. Anyway, once I got over the wow factor of, hey, the game is pretty functional right now, uh, there still were a couple of bugs that reared their ugly head. Some punk buster issues and the nefarious Battlefield 4 has stopped working is back. I've gotten it a number of times. It has apparently been patched quite quickly by DICE. I haven't gotten it since the announcement of the fix that was going out for it, so hopefully that's gone again, but man, that was disappointing to see where the game is working once again, and all of a sudden it's just crashing to desktop. Man, DICE, you gotta work on that QA. Come on now, you got CTE, it's been getting better, let's keep it up. Going back to the DLC itself, the four new maps actually really didn't impress me at first. 
A lot of the assets look recycled, and of course this is a video game, they can't create real life one-to-one. -one. You have to reuse assets, but on certain maps like Pearl Market and Sunken Dragon, a lot of those assets that are being reused are reused in ways that are very, very obvious to the player. You're seeing buildings taken from Siege of Shanghai, you're seeing the same hallways and staircases from other maps, and a lot of that I would imagine has to do with the destruction templates. When you have a building set up for destruction, that's a complicated set of assets combined into one asset, and when all that is set up, you can't just do that over and over again for each new building type. You've got to find new ways to use that complicated set of, uh, of building assets that have all that destruction and everything baked into it. Yeah, I mean, you've got to use that over and over again. Sure. But I feel like the level designers could have done a bit of a better job at spreading those recycled assets out to make them less obvious. The sunset lighting makes Sunken Dragon look like a pretty close carbon copy of Dawnbreaker from the base game. It is not, of course, a carbon copy, but those first impressions do hurt, it just looks a lot like it. And Lumfini Garden, being a kind of garden style map set in China, feels a lot like one end of Flood Zone, visually with the assets, the lighting, and everything else. It just feels a lot like it. This doesn't make these maps bad by any means, it's just my first impressions, and you have to be careful with a very, I guess, skeptical fan base right now when you release DLC like this, that you try to present the best face possible. Speaking of visuals though, Propaganda, I think, is my definite favorite map from the DLC. It very well may become one of my favorite maps in the entire game. It has a unique visual style that reminds me quite a bit of Bad Company 2's snow maps. It is a large map, both in Rush and Conquest, and it has a lot of destruction. Sure, the giant buildings don't have our drop-down destruction that we all miss from Battlefield 3, but there's tons of buildings that can collapse entirely, there's fences and concrete barriers and little bits and pieces of debris everywhere, and as the battle commences, the map gets pretty torn up. Definitely high on my list for this DLC, and a map that I look forward to playing each time it comes up. Lumfini Garden was a map that I was impressed by the size of, initially. And I think that's kind of stuck with me. It's a nice open conquest map, perhaps a little bit too little cover. And there is a lot of sniping that happens from the high zones. Uh, the overhead railroad section, a few of the higher buildings. That can get annoying after a while. I wish there was just a bit more ground cover for infantry. But as a whole, Lumfini Garden is pretty enjoyable. I think it also has one of the larger levolution effects in this DLC, which is the, uh, the mudslide. And in my opinion, it's the most visually impressive, and I don't know, it's just not a huge game changer for the map. To be fair to the designers, it does change a lot about that part of the map. The mudslide knocks over debris, moves buildings, and completely changes the terrain, but it's just kind of limited to that one little section, that one little side of the map. It makes no real changes to those other flags in, say, conquest mode. Lumfini Garden is not the most amazing map in this DLC, or even the game, but it's enjoyable, and I will be going back to it for sure. Sunken Dragon. Now here's a map that is, I guess, the most unbalanced as far as, you know, having a gameplay map that's mirrored. They tried to avoid that with Sunken Dragon, and it really didn't work. Having that single control bridge is, in my opinion, a mistake that tends to be a nasty bottleneck with snipers in these invincible concrete overhead buildings guarding the bridge, and with an unbalanced amount of flags on each side of the moat area, the map can be a one-sided affair. I do like the verticality of the map, but its size and verticality seems to me like it hurt the detail of the map. There's some very, very blank buildings on this map, where you're just climbing through empty hallways and staircases. And there are certain areas of this map where the recycled assets problem definitely pops up and is distracting. Additionally, when Yako and I were trying out the domination mode on this map, we discovered that two of the flags were up in the sunken restaurant. The third flag was out on a barge off to the side. What happened was the enemy team locked down the two flags in domination in that restaurant, and the only way to get up to them 
was the central staircases, the four central staircases in the center of the restaurant. Well, the problem there is that if the enemy team is above you, they can shoot down into all four staircases. So it took us the entire match just to fight our way up the stairs, just dying over and over and over again. And hopefully we'll see some changes with that on CTE. Pearl Market was a map that at first glance to me appeared to be too big, too copied and pasted, and honestly, just too much. On a 64 player server, you will be shot from every rooftop, every window, every back alleyway, and every direction that you were not looking. Backing it down to a well organized 48 player match, or even 32 players, the map tends to shine a bit more. It is, in my opinion, one of the best Battlefield infantry maps that I've seen in a while, perhaps since Battlefield 3's close quarters. It has a lot of alleyways and a lot of uh, verticality to the map, but it is completely open with streets everywhere outside the map where you can flank. To me, nothing says a Battlefield map like flanking options and really just player options. Although a lot of the buildings and alleyways are the same assets that you see quite a few times throughout the map, the layout of them is organized in a very deliberate and careful manner, and there tends to be some very, very intense firefights across the map. While initially not being impressed with Pearl Market, I think it is fast becoming my favorite go-to shotgun or infantry map in the whole game. I've had some really, really intense rounds on there, and like I said, the more I play it, the more I really get into it. As I mentioned guys, this DLC, Dragon's Teeth, does drop a few new weapons. I am not really a weapons review kind of guy though. You guys know where to go for the best sources for your weapons reviews, so I won't go into too much detail there, other than to say that I believe the Bulldog is going to be getting a nerf very very soon. It's got a long reload, sure, and it's pretty inaccurate at stock, sure. But something about this gun is just insanely powerful at getting quick kills by like aiming at your enemy and walking shots up into their head. Like a quick burst and I've gotten some weird kills with the Bulldog. I feel a nerf incoming so expect that soon. In other news that Dave does not care about they added a Deagle. It is overpowered from what I understand and is everyone's current go to pistol. Being a real world gun snob though, I am not a fan of the Deagle, it has no real purpose or place in any kind of military game. I don't even have it unlocked yet, I'm not really worried about unlocking it if I do. I might try it out just to see what it's like, but my personal favorite pistols from real life, the CZ-75 and the 1911 are both in game, and they're both quite good, and that makes me happy. I think I will be a stick in the mud and just stick with those. So here we are guys, in July, quite a few months after the release of Battlefield 4, and the game is a much prettier picture than it was. I went into Dragon's Teeth with some skepticism, and to be honest, a lot of just passiveness. I wasn't super pumped about it, but uh, I've consistently had fun, and I'll be coming back for more for sure. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all later.